Ahoy! Welcome to what episode are we on, Nick? Uh, we are on season two, episode six, seven, seventeen or sixteen. One of them. <laughs> Bear with. <laughs> seventeen. As, Welcome to Bottom of the Stream, episode seventeen. How are you today? I'm good. Well, actually, oh. I'm, I'm all right. Why? What's up? I have had a bit of a stressful twenty-four hours. Why? Is there anything worse than losing your wallet? No, nothing in the whole world. Maybe losing your phone. I absolutely wasted last night. Why? What happened? Because I couldn't find my wallet. Why? Where was it? Oh, the kids ate it, wasn't it? No. <laughs> it's, uh, it's at work. Oh. Like 65 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> That's on, annoying. On my desk. But I've not been there today. I've been somewhere else. That is annoying. So I got home last night. I was like, oh, I need to go and do some shopping. Oh, you're living like one of the poor people, like uh, me. Where the hell's my wallet? <laughs> <laughs> I really hope it's at work. So all night last night, I was like, oh, if it, I hope it's there. But I can't find out until the morning when someone gets in to check. Oh, that is stressful. So all last night, I was just playing on my mind. Isn't that had a good week? But it was there. I, I, I found had, out this morning. I didn't have so. a great start to the week this week. I had a fight of a tree. Okay. And lost. I, I Yes, you Can are you a see? bit... You look a bit wounded. I've got a black eye. Yeah. I'm like a fighter. <laughs> I am... Um, there was a tree down in the road, and I tried to get it out of the road, and it hit me in the <laughs> face. Bloody Groot. Yeah, yeah. So that wasn't a great start to the week. Are you, are you okay? I'm all right now. Seriously, though, if that had been a little bit higher... Yeah, I might have gone blind. You might have had to wear an eye patch. Yeah, like Gabrielle. Yeah. <laughs> Properly captain in this boat. <laughs> With an eye patch. Last week, you are going to have a peg leg. I tell you, you turn into a proper pirate. <laughs> my leg's all right now. My foot's all right now. Okay. So that's good. What do you think of our new setup? I love it. So, you've, so I, I mean, if you follow us on the, uh, Socials. On the socials, you might have seen we've had a bit of a uh, revamp done, of the I've boat. I've some redecorating. It's great. It's awesome, isn't it? We've I'm, got a desk. I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm not gonna. We've got a desk each. I know. We've got two desks. Nick's got a desk in my house. <laughs> and I, yeah, but just, just like I say, I just need a key, and I can come and work here properly. I'll, I'll give you a key. Um, a key. And I'm not going to slouch into the sofa anymore. No, the sofa's gone. That was, Brilliant. That was a stressful activity trying to break a sofa up into <laughs> small pieces. What did you use? Your bare hands. Yeah, your teeth. M- my dad. Okay. <laughs> When we got the sofa up into this room, it ripped all the wallpaper off the wall on the stairs. I remember it being only just decorating pain. the stairs, so I wasn't taking it back down again. So I had to get a crowbar at it. So my mum's got three bags of leather now that she can make shit out of. <laughs> and uh, I've got the wood that we've used to support the table is from the back of the sofa. That is proper upcycled. Proper upcycled. But yeah, so we've got a proper desk, so we should be a bit more professional now. I can see the laptop, which I never used to be able to see. We can see each other. We can see each other. But not to peer over yeah. my We've got a big screen and... where we can see things that we need to look up. We're all good. We're all uh, we're all good. I'm excited. Well done. I'm excited for the future. Thank you. It was a stressful day. It took about eight hours. I'm excited for the future of Bottom of the Stream from now on. You get out what you put in and all that. Exactly. Where do we start? Shall I do some social medias? Do it. So... If you want to follow us on Twitter, our Twitter is at BOTS underscore podcast. Instagram is the same, at BOTS underscore podcast. Facebook.com slash bottom of the stream is the Facebook page. The website is www.bottomofthestream.com, where you'll find every episode we've ever recorded and both season stream tables. And you can also now follow us on Patreon, uh, which is patreon.com slash bottom of the stream. And we got a third Patreon this week. Yes. So shout out. Shout out to Sam Mulholland. Welcome aboard. You're an able seaman. Came in at the five dollar, came in at Very the five dollar level, and uh, yeah, it's good to have you on board, Sam. Yeah, watch out for your uh, bonus bits and bobs. Yeah, you'll be getting bits and bobs. There's a few little minisodes that you might have by now. Should have by now. You'll be getting early access to the episodes, so you should have. And there'll be some stuff winging its way to you in the post very soon good so yeah so yeah if you want to follow us on patreon and support the show from there please do if you don't want to part with any money then support us by going to apple podcasts and reviewing us yeah leave us a review and a rating because it really helps it really the helps algorithm. Yeah. The, the more you can write the better we uh, better we get so yeah apple podcasts or podchaser.com where you can review us and uh, i think that's it for the social medias yes cool we've got anything else to talk about any netflix news let's do um I haven't got news. I've got some top of the stream stuff. I've, I've got, got some news. Watched. I'll quickly run through the first news. You, season yes. three has been announced. Oh, right. Okay. So, <laughs> not you. <laughs> this, this is about some crazy stalker. Still not you. No. Um, yeah, you. As I've just finished. We've, have you watched it? I don't think you have, have you? No. So season two's just finished and Netflix have just renewed it for season three, which will be coming, I think, later this year or early next year. Oh, it's the old tricky third season on Netflix. Yeah. It's going to be fun. A lot of stuff doesn't make it past three series. It doesn't, that is true. I'm, I was surprised that you made it to the third one, I must admit. It's a great show, but... I'm still bitter about... Um, what's the zombie one? I'm so bitter, I've forgotten his name. <laughs> With Drew Barrymore. I don't know. And Timothy Oliphant. 
Oh, uh, Santa Clarita Diet. Yeah. Yeah, that's annoying. That was a really good show. Oh, so good. Yeah, it was. That was a bit gutting. Uh, what else? Oh, Bojack Horseman is coming back on the 31st of January for its final episodes. That will be the end of Bojack Horseman. And unfortunately, I didn't make it to the end of that show. I remember you saying it had it lost dropped me. off. It lost me in yeah. the last season. Yes, yeah, no. Will, not will you tie it up? I might watch. finish it off. Okay. Because it feels wrong to have gone four seasons and not finish yeah. it off. That's what but they want you to it do. It was a bit of a struggle that last season. But it's coming back on the 31st of this month. And it's that's going to be, I think there's about, I don't know how many. I'm not going to even lie and make up a number. There's a few episodes left and that's coming back then. Uh, that's all my Netflix news. Cool. What have you been watching at the top of the stream, Nick? So, a couple of things. So, one thing we touched on last week was Dracula. Oh, yeah. I have now watched it. Oh, right. All three? Yes. And? Uh, I, I really liked it. I cool. thought... I really liked it. Too. What I liked about it was that you, you had a totally different style for each episode. Yeah. So, your first one was like a horror horror film. Or I'll call it a film. Yeah, well, it's 90 minutes long, isn't it? it? So, yeah, the first one was like horror. The yeah. second one was basically uh, Agatha Christie type thing. Yeah. It was Murder on the Orient Express, but really on a boat. Was. Yeah. Uh, and then the third one was your sort of modern day almost cl- crime drama. Yeah, crimey, soapy. I really enjoyed it. I really. Enjoyed it. I didn't think the third one was as good as the first. No, two. I. I think but, if you've been super critical, they got slightly worse. No, I really liked the second one. On. I think the second one was the best um, one. I, I enjoyed the first one the best, I, but I, I've got a bit of a soft spot for that sort of real gothic hmm. horror type stuff. I thought the second one was really well written. Um, I thought the guy who played Dracula. Yeah. Was it Klaus Bang? Maybe. Great name. Isn't that a make of speakers? <laughs> That's Bang Olufsen. Oh. <laughs> Close. He's like a, he's a Danish actor. I thought he was awesome. Yeah, he was really good. Played it really well, I thought. Um, I don't know if it'll come back because it didn't actually... Well, it might it might do all right on Netflix. His ratings in, on the BBC were not that great. No. So. But that's BBC viewers for you, isn't it? Yeah. Who watches TV when it's on now? Nobody. No. no I didn't even... I watched that as it was on the TV, but on the iPlayer. Okay. <laughs> because I missed the first 10 minutes right. every night. So I just watched it from the start on the iPlayer. But yeah, it's really good. Um, anything else? Uh, I've watched AJ and the Queen. Oh, yes, I've heard of this. Which is... Tell uh, me more. Uh, so that is uh, RuPaul's... You've got a real thing for drag queens, haven't you? Well, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a really interesting like subculture. Yeah, I agree. And I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. I'll have to give it a watch. Um, it's basically a road trip series. Right. And it's it's an it's, it's it's nothing you haven't seen before. So it's an odd couple of things. So RuPaul plays a drag queen yep. who's going out on tour, and he through various things that are far too complicated to go through <laughs> here gets paired up with this little girl right. and sort of becomes her guardian type. You know, oh, right. this odd couple travelling across the states being pursued by a couple of criminals, which is a bit dumb and dummery. Uh, I'm definitely going to give it a it, watch. It's it's good. I always think with things like that, it rests on. Is the kid annoying or not? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> because that can really make or break that yeah. sort of thing. And she's really good. Cool. Credited, uh, the actress who plays it is just Izzy G. Izzy G? Yeah, very good. Uh, I really enjoy it, but I think it's eight or ten episodes, I'm not sure. I'll give it, what, yeah. half an hour? 40 minutes? 45 to an hour. Oh, really? I think they do very slightly. Cool. Um, I will check it it's out. It's good laugh. I'm on it. Uh, I don't think I, I've not been watching a lot. Oh, I started watching Medical Police. Okay, I've heard of this. Netflix, it's only just come out. It's the, have you heard of Children's Hospital? It's a sitcom in America. Yeah. It's the same people who make okay. that. It's, I think it's like a spin-off of that. Um, I haven't seen that though. And I'm only two episodes into this, so it's a bit what? too early to make a judgment. Okay. But Are you going to keep going for a bit? Yeah, for a bit. Oh, it's it's goofy. Stuff. It's really goofy. It's really weird. It's proper off-the-wall comedy. Okay. But not quite, I've quite enjoyed the two. I'm like watched, picturing so. scrubbers in my head. <laughs> Similar, but... A bit more. I don't even know the way to describe it. It's just <laughs> weird. It's just weird. Just watch Check it. Check it out. Just go and watch it, please. Yeah, I've watched two. I, I will watch more, and I'll let, probably let you know more next week because I'll have probably done the first season. But okay, I'll try and see if I can catch one, one or two before next week. Wicked. It only came out l- mid ne- mid last week. It's really recent. There is something else I did want to mention. Oh, you banged the table. So, then. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's well, really exciting. That's going to be a risk having this there. <laughs> End of the month. Yep. A film comes out. Yeah. On Netflix. I think it's getting a limited cinema release. Yeah. It's been in the news a bit this week because it was missed out by the Oscars. And right. that is Uncut Gems. Oh, yeah. I've heard briefly of it. Which is apparently the making of Adam Sandler. Oh, really? He is supposed to be incredible in it. I don't like Adam Sandler, so that could be quite interesting. I don't... Well, I did, like, in the early, 90, <laughs> early to mid-90s with Happy Gilmore and stuff. But apparently, it's incredible. Yeah, I read a few tweets from people saying they were disappointed that he hadn't been nominated yeah. for an Oscar. 
Like Adam Sandler's never going to get nominated for an Oscar. That's not going to happen. Yeah, you can't really see it, can you? <laughs> no, I can't see it. I can't see it. No matter, even if he was like the best actor ever, he's not going to get nominated now. Yeah. So end end of January that comes out over here uh, on Netflix. So I'm definitely going to be checking that out when it when cool. it arrives. Cool. Uh, Sex Education. That's back tomorrow. Yes. As we record this, it's back tomorrow. So by the time it comes out, it will be out. So that's a really good show. So, yeah, it, that's got a lot to tell about because I've, it's, the season, season one of that was very good. Yeah, it is. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'll start that tomorrow, as in whenever the last, whenever this is coming out. <laughs> then I'll have watched it by then. Ah, oh, you've got to tell me why I'm confused. <laughs> tell me why. It's because we're recording late this week. <laughs> we're uh, we're late, two days later than we normally record. Oh, no. so it's thrown me. Uh, anything else? I don't think so. No, I don't think I have either. Should we talk about your wild card film? Yes. Okay. Why are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> no reason. <laughs> Let's talk about the anomaly. Uh, so. Before before we start, yep. I've got a little game. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which and, and I, Well, I just asked if there was anything else and you said no, you lied. I know, I was just trying to fool you a bit. <laughs> um, do you want to do that now? Yeah, let's do it now. So, I'm excited. Good. <laughs> you should, I don't know if you should be or not. So, um, the anon- we're talking about the anomaly. Yep. I find that so difficult to say. <laughs> it's going to trip me up so much. And a cameo in this film is uh, Michael Bisping. Yep. Who... Is a or was a UFC fighter. Yes, British guy. I think he's from Manchester. Don't know. Very northern. What's good about UFC fighters and boxers? Don't know. Nicknames. Okay. They have silly nicknames nicknames. or or like tough nicknames. Yep. So, what I want to know in this game is, can you tell the difference between real fighter nicknames (laughs) and made up ones? Have you given it a name? Yeah, sure have. Go on. Octagon or (laughs) Moctagon. Brilliant. Okay, I'm ready to play Octagon or Moctagon. So, I've got five fighters. Cool. I'm not and, a big UFC guy, so I'm not going to know money. I don't and know. you just have to tell me, is it a real nickname or a made-up one? Yeah, I get it. Octagon or Moctagon. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> so, usual rules apply. Cool. Okay, let's start with Ian Uncle Creepy McCall. <laughs> Uncle Creepy, that's an awful nickname, <laughs> but it sounds real. Um, yeah, Octagon. Real. Correct. Really? Yeah. Uncle Creepy. That poor bloke. <laughs> okay, next one. Yeah. Andre Touchy Feely. His surname's Feely? Yeah. F-I-L-I. <laughs> that's got to be real. It is. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> like right that itself, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Touchy Feely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Bob the Builder Stevens. No, no, not having that. No way that's real. You've made that up. Yeah, I made that up. <laughs> oh, you're doing well. I know your sense of humour so well. <laughs> Three out of five. I've won. Uh, Ryan. Right, the next one. Ryan Darth Bader. That's brilliant. If that's not real, real. Correct. Oh, four oh, out of you're four. You're on for a clean sweep I've, here. Have I ever had a clean sweep before? No, I don't, I don't think you have. Oh, me, I'm good. Right. The pressure's on. I'm scared. <laughs> right, so the last one. The Bacon Torpedo, Davy Valentino. <laughs> the Bacon Torpedo? Yeah. I think Where does that come from? I think he's talking about his dick. <laughs> Is he? I presume so. Would that not be the sausage torpedo? Real. It's made up. Did you make that up? Yeah. What's wrong with you? I don't know. <laughs> What's wrong with your head? Where did you come up with that? You it's tricked just... me then by saying he was talking about his <laughs> dick. Damn it. Four out of five. Oh, that's not bad. I'll take that. Good effort. Good effort. Cool. Right. Enough of this nonsense. <laughs> Let's talk about some more nonsense. Yes. <laughs> So this week, Nick, well, last week, Nick chose The Anomaly as his wild card for this season. It is a film from 2014. It is a 15. It's on for an hour and 37 minutes and currently rated at 4.7 out of 10 on IMDb. Stars. Stars Noel Clark, who plays a guy called Ryan. He also directed. He also directed this. And additional writing material. This is what he's credited as. Oh, right, okay. So he's added additional content to it. Um, you'll know him from, he did a trilogy of films, uh, Kiddledhood, Adulthood and Brotherhood. I think he's got another one on the way as well. Has he? Yeah, I think it's Parenthood. I don't know if he's, yeah, I'm pretty sure he is. Isn't that Steve Martin? Yeah, it is. It's also a TV series. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so that's probably what he's most famous for. He was also in Doctor Who for a little while, um, but he's been in, he's famous British. He actor, pops up fairly he pops often. Up in yeah. quite a lot of stuff. Also, Over here. Also stars Ian Summerholder as Harkin who you will know from, probably mainly from Lost. Well, I know mainly from Lost. 
Uh, he was also in quite a lot of episodes of The Vampire Diaries. I, I think, think that's probably guy. what he's that's probably mainly most, known for. Yeah, mainly known for. He played Boone in Lost. And also stars Brian Cox, not Dr. Brian Cox, as I was about <laughs> to call him then, because he plays a doctor. Um, Brian Cox has Dr. Langham, who... Brian Cox is in everything. He was the original Hannibal Lecter. Oh, he was, yeah. And, yeah, he's been in pretty much everything ever. So he's been working consistently since the 60s. He's in quite a few X-Men films, isn't he? Yes, he is, yeah. He... We are talking about uh, awards last week as well. Yeah. He won a Golden Globe last week. Did he? Before. I yeah. missed that. What did he win that for? Um, best actor in a TV series. All right. In a show called Succession. Never heard of it. It's an HBO show, apparently. Cool. Um, yeah. So it's pretty... Pretty strong cast. He once claims he was felt up by Princess Margaret as well. There you go. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Princess Margaret's a crazy person. So... Nick, this was your wildcard film for this week. Sure this was. Season. What is your one word review of your wildcard film for this season? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it would be incoherent. I think that's fair. <laughs> I, I think that's very fair. Um, this is going to be a really tough one to do, talk through. I've got 13 pages of notes. That's I, interesting because I've got six. <laughs> So, I tend to make more notes than you because I do more of the talking, <laughs> I think. But this film is, I'm going to say, this film's batshit crazy. Sure, it is. Not necessarily in a good way. <laughs> no, um, it's different it's, to it, something we... Because oh, I was thinking, so, the reason I picked it yeah. was not because I particularly wanted to see it, although I thought the, the synopsis sounded quite cool. You know, a guy basically wakes up for 10 minutes at a time yeah. and he's got to do stuff which yeah. we'll talk about. Um, but mostly because we haven't really done much sci-fi. Yeah. And I thought, let's throw one of them in. I think the only thing I can remember doing that you could maybe say was sci-fi was um, from our first series. I'm, just, my, I'm not good on names today. The one in the hotel with the dreams? No. The, oh. what, the, <laughs> the one with the licorice around the house. Oh, wait for instructions. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty sci-fi. But I, I think that's about it. Yeah, that was episode three yeah. of all time. So, so that was the main time. reason for, for choosing it. That probably is sci-fi, and it's been a long time since we've done one. So so like I said a minute ago, this is going to be really tough for us to talk through because it's fuck, it moves all over the place. It, yeah. It's never in the same place for more than a few minutes. No. So We'll do our best. We'll do our best, but it's going to be a tough one. So the film starts with Noel Clark, who plays Ryan. He wakes up in a dark room, and in this dark room with, it, with him is a child called Alex. Who is chained to the wall? He is. So yeah, they're in. I think it's fairly obvious pretty quickly they're in the back of a truck. Yeah, not straight away, no. but it is obvious pretty quickly. They're cha- he's chained up to the back of a truck wall, and Ryan's in there with him. And he basically Ryan says to him, "What's what's happened?" And he says, "Some men in red masks turned up and killed my mum and kidnapped me." And basically, Ryan unties him and rescues him, doesn't he? Yeah. Because Ryan doesn't know what the hell's going on. No, he's, and he's he, blind to it as we Yeah, are, he doesn't. Really. He can't. He sort of. He's very. Yeah, he's discombobulated. And we'll, you know, we'll find out very quickly. He he doesn't know how he got there. Yeah. Um, and why he's there? Yeah, exactly. Um, so they basically they wait for this truck to stop and they get out and they start running, and they run. Well, <laughs> there's <laughs> stuff in this. Yeah, but just sorry, there's stuff in this that just made me. I the first time I laughed out loud. Uh, I know it was definitely not the intention of this film, was them trying to escape this truck. So they the truck stopped. Yeah. Why they couldn't have jumped out of it when it was very slowly moving when he opened a door, I don't <laughs> know. And they sort of walked, started to walk away, the pair of them. Yeah. And then the driver <laughs> and his mate walked around the back. Yeah, they're like, oh. And then they're just like, oh, we better run. <laughs> and then they ran. And it was just, it, was it made silly. me laugh. It was uh, silly. It was... <laughs> and... They're running along the side of the River Thames in London, and it's like a futuristic version of London. There's yeah, there's some weird-looking buildings and things Poorly done. CGI. CGI of some skyscrapers. Yeah. And they end up in a graveyard, an overgrown graveyard, and Alex falls over and hurts his leg. Stupid kid. Stupid there's, kid. There's a lot of tropes like that in this movie yeah. as well. It's like, oh, shit, the kid's fallen over. I've got to <laughs> carry him. Yeah, and... It's basically Ryan has to stop and, and hide him, so they hide together in this graveyard. They hide behind like a graveyard. Graveyard? They hide behind a gravestone. Because <laughs> uh, there's, there's, the guys from the truck are chasing them and yeah. trying to find them. And Ryan basically reveals at this point that he's been, he's been in, he thinks he's been in rehab for post-traumatic 
post-traumatic stress disorder. This is the last thing he can remember years. is being in hospital. Yeah. Uh, and he knows he was in hospital for PTSD. PTSD. And then a <laughs> then there's a fight. Yeah, so they, the, thug, well, the thugs find them out, basically. Yeah. And what did you think of the fight scenes in this film? Uh, I, f- I feel like I want to say Noel Clark was just acting out some wrestling yeah, in his bedroom. <laughs> yeah. It was all slow motion. It was kind of like wrestling. There was wrestling moves. It was there. like The Matrix, but shit. shit. <laughs> cheap. <laughs> Yeah, because there was a lot of slow mo. A lot of slow mo. Every fight seems in. <laughs> but really it's, there's obviously action. not enough budget in this film to sort of do the whole multiple cameras and yeah. move around the yeah. antagonist and protagonist. So we just had a bit of slow mo. Slow mo fighting. And at, at one point, he actually choke slams this thug. It does. I but think that's how he. They're not this realistic one. fights at all. No, they're not. Um, so he he wins this first particular fight, and he he kind of looks at his hands like, "What the fuck? What? How did I?" just fight that man yeah. as if he didn't know that he could fight and it comes out I don't know how it comes out but it comes out that the date is June the 7th it looks at his watch for some yeah. reason it's yeah he's got his watch on hasn't yeah. it? it says June the 7th and the last thing he remembers is January Yeah, so he's lost six months of his life somewhere and he gets a telephone call and it's in Summerholder's character on the phone who is Harkin because yeah. he's also walking around the graveyard looking for him isn't he he's like stupidly close to him yeah he's, like, he's probably about <laughs> as close to him as I am to you now so what I don't know a metre yeah. this desk's a metre wide okay well good, good, good reference point <laughs> Um, so he definitely would have heard the phone ring. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he would have heard Ryan talk back to him. Yeah, definitely. You don't need to be on a phone. No. Um, and whilst this is happening, Alex, uh, not Alex, Ryan looks in his pocket and he finds a red mask, which obviously triggers some memories for Alex because that's who killed yeah, his mum. He, he and he screams and crazy. goes a bit loopy. And everything sort of then just like phases out. Yeah. It kind of, it's like the screen glitches. Yeah. It's like a glitch. And why? Why? Ryan. Wyan, <laughs> Ryan wakes up in a kind of office library type room. Yeah, he's in a dusty library. Dusty yeah, library. Like the windows are We go back there up. quite often in this, don't we? There's yeah. a few times it happens. And he catches, him, he catches a glimpse of himself in a mirror and he's got a beard, which he didn't have before. Or he didn't think he had before. And he makes a telephone call to the rehab centre that he believes he was in. So he uses the internet. He's got like a glass tablet type thing. Yeah. It's set in the future, this film. It, it, they've basically just nicked all their tech from Minority Report, haven't they? <laughs> they definitely have. There's a real Minority Report scene coming up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he, he rings the rehab centre and it turns out it's been closed for a number of years. Yeah, so whoever and whoever answers the phone, he says, what year is it? Yeah. And you don't hear what they say, but, but it makes kind him of, kind of go all wibbly wobbly. Yeah, and... his legs fall out from underneath him and he kind of collapses. Um, and then Harkin walks in. And Wearing a terrible suit. Terrible suit. <laughs> Ian Summerholder is a good-looking guy, and they make they, him look really weird. They did not do him any favours. They did not do him any favours in this Surely, at all. Surely, you know, he should be one of the selling points. Yeah. Especially, the, I didn't realise this film was as old as it is, so it's like six years old. Yeah. So, I'm presuming he would have been, like, prime in the Vampire Diary years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, did, they didn't make the most of him. Not it at all. looks like he's wearing a picnic blanket. It's awful. <laughs> it's, it's an awful suit. Anyway, he comes in, and he, he talks to Ryan as if he knows... Like he knows him and like he knows that Ryan should know what's going on. Yeah. But he obviously doesn't. And then he just says, it happened again, didn't it? Yeah. And there's all this stuff on the wall. Yeah. It's got like, like a target. Beautiful mind kind of Yeah. Thing. All these bits of red string and stuff like that. Yeah. And so he says, it's happened again, hasn't it? And then they have a fight. And it's another one of these slow motion fist fight wrestling matches that this film loves because there's about 50 of them. Yeah. <laughs> I've just written Kung... Every time it happens in my notes, I've just written Kung Fu exclamation mark. I've written slow motion fight exclamation mark. <laughs> um, and Harkin gets the better of him in this one. He manages to choke him out. And he says, just as he's going out, he says, tells him the reboot will only take 9 minutes and 47 seconds, but be careful what you're doing when you reboot. Yeah. And just as he finishes saying, be careful what you're doing, he wait, Ryan wakes up and he's having sex with a lady. He's literally he's, in a woman. He's literally he in a woman doing the naughty. And... Which obviously freaks him out a little bit because he's, he kind of pushes away from her. Yeah, he's choking, even though a choke. Yeah. He's like choking her. Yeah. And he kind of freaks out a little bit and says to her, what am I doing? What's going on? Who are you? Where are, where am I? Um, and she basically, she doesn't understand because she, she doesn't really understand what's going on, obviously, because nobody does. And I don't. Yeah. And she says to her, he says to her, the man who started this with you is not the man that I am now. Yeah. I've changed personality, changed the person who I am in this body. Um, he gets dressed. You get a lingering shot of his ass for quite a while. Um, and hers. And hers, yeah. Yeah, we're not discriminating in this. 
And he tells her to get dressed as well, and they're going to leave. And it turns out they're in a brothel. Yeah. So she's a prostitute. Who, she says, I can't leave. Um, Sergio is going to uh, yeah, do you in if you try and take me. If you try and take me away. She says she's trying to make some money for her sick... Uh, she started doing this to make money for her sick son. Yeah, but then he died. But now he's dead. So, but she's still doing it anyway. That did not go well. Yeah. <laughs> so they walk out of the, the room, and he tells the pimp, who is Sergio... Is that Michael Bisping? Yeah. Yeah. That he's leaving and he's taking the girl with him. Do you know what happens then? Kung Fu! Another, another slow motion fight. And there's about three or four of Sergio's men. Yeah. And he takes them all out and destroys every one of them. Every little table in the room, yeah. someone gets thrown through. Yeah, that's been destroyed. <laughs> there's a lot of accessories that get destroyed in this <laughs> yeah, film. Yeah, there is. Nightstands and uh, lampshades yeah, and lamps. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and he gives her some money and he tells her to go to the police and tell them that he kidnapped her. And oh no, he kidnapped Alex, and that he shot Alex's mum. So yeah. he wants her to shop him in, basically. Uh, but he can't do it because she says, "Why don't you do that?" And he says, "I can't do that. There's only nine minutes and forty-seven seconds till I change, and I've, it's been quite a while." And they walk around a corner, and they're in Times Square in New York. Yeah, so they're not in London anymore. <laughs> they're in Times Square in New York, and there's a bit of there's like a it's almost like a chase scene, but a public chase. This scene. This was another lull for me. It's so funny. A walking this chase bit scene. This made me lull. <laughs> lull. <laughs> Don't say lol out loud. Um, yeah, they're, they're walking through Times Square. So lol out loud. That's laugh out loud out loud. <laughs> That's really loud. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't do that. Um, yeah, they're walking through Times Square, which is obviously really busy. Yeah. And Sergio and his men are walking as well. Like, but nobody wants to draw any attention to yeah, themselves. So they're just the the walk chasing each other. I have questions. Go on. So when they walk out into Times Square. Yeah. So this is supposed to be the future. Yes. But there's a massive billboard which is clearly advertising the movie, We the Millers. <laughs> really? I never noticed that. Like, it's huge. It's right in the middle That's of the That's from street. ages ago. It's like blue and yellow. That's... It's like It was like Jennifer Aniston movie, wasn't it? Yeah. And um, he's the little British lad, posh guy, Will Poulter. Will Poulter, yeah. So it's not the future. <laughs> no. It's the past. What? I didn't notice that. That's crazy. That must have just been there when they were filming it. So it still wouldn't have been the future when this movie came out? No. So is it an alternate... Or is it just to, nobody's noticed that that's, on, that that's on the screen and this film was filmed in 2013? Unless, that. in the future, like, the the movie We the Millers is, like, critically reappraised. And gets re-released. Or remade. Oh. <laughs> as, like, this amazing cultural achievement. <laughs> I hadn't noticed like, that. That's brilliant. It's like the future Citizen Kane. <laughs> I think that's unlikely. Me too. I've not seen it. but <laughs> I have. Have you? It's all right. <laughs> It's not going to be the future. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Amazing. I don't know. Anyway. That. That's a great spot. That should have been your trivia question. That would have been a great trivia question. Anyway, they catch them eventually down some alleyway, I think. And they take the girl away. But Ryan changes again at that exact moment. But there's no, there's no drama. They literally... Ryan and Dana, the prostitute, they walk into an alleyway. Yeah. And Sergio and his goons... Fun. Walk after them, <laughs> and yeah. that's it. And that's it. They don't run. There's no check. It's just, it was really funny. Yeah. yeah. But now, so, so we've we've changed again. Yeah. So he passes out again. Yeah. So and now he's got an afro. Yeah. He comes around in a bad wig. Yeah. <laughs> really bad wig. And a, and a bit and, of a bigger beard. Yeah. And he's kind of he's playing a doctor now, or he is a doctor now, and he's with two cops who are waterboarding somebody. He's undercover. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Um, because I think it was mentioned last time, your your ID is going to be Cedric Sanders, and that's what he's got in his name. But yeah, but yeah, he's basically in 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 this interrogation room, and him and two other guys are torturing someone. Yeah, they're like waterboarding. Yes, yeah. it turns out he's like a scientist, don't they? D- don't they? <laughs> Isn't he? It's like a, <laughs> they call him the scientist. I'm I'm, I'm being a bit vague because I've written something here, and I, for the life of me, cannot read what it says. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> um, but anyway, the, the culmination of that scene. Is another slow motion fight. Yeah, but it's not quite so kung fu. Yeah, um, there's loads of smoke because someone sets off like a grenade. Yeah, and basically the guy who's getting tortured, the scientist guy, kind of escapes. <laughs> and um, but they take care of the like feds. And this is another bit that made me laugh because Ryan, so Noel Clark's character, he just grabs the scientist by the shoulders and basically says, "Quickly, tell me, does mind control exist?" <laughs> And that's literally what he says. Yeah, because he thinks that's what's happening now. It's really badly, clunkily 
written. I don't know this is a stupid film anyway. Yeah. But it's really badly written. It's this bit. This bit? <laughs> no, th- this bit stuck out, shall <laughs> yeah, I yeah, say. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it does. Um, and, and the scientist guy even goes, this isn't the time we should be discussing. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> there's, there's cops coming. This is really... really yeah, he, he helps him escape and then he changes again. Um, and he wakes up in a lab now. Yeah. With Harkin, who's in Summer Holder, and the scientist that he's just rescued in the previous life. Yeah. Previous whatever this is. And they're all in this, like, science lab together. And Ryan starts to... He kind of hides behind the desk in there without yeah. the other two noticing. Yeah, it's basically as uh, Harkin is sort of explaining to the scientist, oh, we've brought you this nice facility. You can get on with your work, blah, blah, yeah. Ryan kind of skulks off. He smashes a wine glass because yeah. they're all having a little bit of the bubbly yeah, to celebrate. Sort of celebration. Yeah. And um, he basically hacks into his own neck. Yeah, he's figured out he's got something in his neck. Yeah. So he kind of tries to cut his neck open. Yeah, rem- not... he does remove this a, li- a small little chip, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. Um, and while he's doing this, the scientist and Harkin are having a bit of a chat about what the scientist is planning on doing. Yeah, and the scientist is like, I'm going to make a virus... I'm going to yeah. give people four eyes. Yeah, he's got a virus that can alter DNA. So That's just a pair of glasses. Like, the three, <laughs> three eyes, 18 toes, um, yeah. you know, blue hair, whatever you want. Whatever what do you want, want me to do? Yeah, and he's going to release it into major cities around the world. Yeah. We'll just, like, have a load of things running around. Yeah. And and Harkin kind of says, that's not what we've got. Yeah, that's yet. not what we're doing. That's not what I've got in my mind at all. Um, but just before he like, kind of explains what he is thinking he catches ryan digging at his own neck with this bit of glass and yeah. so a harkin he says stop doing that yeah or you're going to die yeah and i will st- he says i'll stay with you till this one's over so this is the kind of point where we realize that harkin knows what's going on yeah but ryan doesn't Correct. have a clue what's going on um, i'm with ryan yeah me too <laughs> even now so yeah he says to him i'll stay with you till this one's over and the scientist tries to shoot them both but the guns the guns are like dna coded correct so he can't Use it because it's not his good. Like, like Judge Dredd. Yeah, exactly. So like this, this just nabs stuff from much better films all the way through. Yeah. And then this kind of a video comes up on the screen. Yeah. Of Ryan. And he's saying that they have the scientist's son. So this is him when he's not, not too phased he's in. Yeah. yeah. This, you know, this, so we never see what he's like. We only see it every time he has this 10 minutes of yeah. activity. And we don't see what his other consciousness is doing. No. We do on this video. Yeah, because you see a video of him and he says, we have your son, who turns out is Alex. He says, I killed your wife. And I killed your wife. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So this guy must do what we say now. You've got to obey us, basically. We've got your son. We've killed your wife. And do you want to explain how they have... (laughs) How are they holding the scientist's son hostage? (laughs) I have no idea what's going on there, but it's basically... Because this is a really stupid way... (laughs) To hold someone hostage. They've got him suspended from a ceiling yep. in a warehouse yep. between, like, vacuum packed. Basically, Between yeah. two sheets of something. And then with acid. There's some sort of acid in there with him. But it's not affecting him. So, you know, like a Capri Sun. <laughs> exactly that. He's basically, this kid is in, which is like, for anyone outside the UK, <laughs> maybe you have them elsewhere, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's like the, these pouch drinks. Yeah. So he's basically between in this pouch. Yeah. Suspended from the ceiling and surrounded by acid, which is slowly creeping towards, towards him it. in this pouch. Yeah. So they've got so much time, obviously, until he's eaten by this acid. It's like the what s- an inefficient way to kill. <laughs> it's hung hung from the ceiling yeah. as well. It's like how have they done that? I have no idea. Um, I thought it was great, but just as that sort of. <laughs> <laughs> It's terrible. It's terrible. But it was great. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, just as that's all kicking off and we were explained what's going on, Ryan blacks out again. And I, don't, I can't go say again because it happens at least another 50 times. So, so you get a lot of, uh, you get a few now in quick succession. Yeah. Just to, again, mark the passage of time, I guess. Yeah. Uh, where, where, where is this one? He wakes up. So he wakes up on the operating table. Yeah, he wakes up on an operating table. Harkin it's gets funny. these little, like, robots. Yes. They're like bugs. Like cockroach type robots. And they basically fix up the hole that's in Ryan's neck. Yeah. And he's tied, yeah, he's tied down to this this operating table. Yeah. And that's it. Cool. Uh, And then he he wakes up again and he's in the room that Alex is held hostage. Yes, he wakes up in Alex's 
room where he's suspended from the ceiling in a Capri Sun. And he's, he's now got this little gizmo yeah. on his arm that, was it basically knock him out again? Yeah, I think so. So every time he comes round into this 10 minutes of consciousness, yeah. he this little gizmo sort of knocks him back out again yeah. until he's reset. Yeah. And that's that. Yeah, that's that. So you do get a few there because there's another one now where he, he wakes up and he's kind of suited up. And is he in China or is walking through? Uh, Shanghai. Yeah, he's, yeah, it's either that or a Chinatown yeah. kind of area. No, it's definitely Shanghai. Shanghai. And he's with Harkin and they're all like suited up together and a few other goons as well. And then Sergio's there. Yep. Just in the background of this crowd. Yeah. So he's gone from New York to Singapore. So this... Don't know. So this Russian gangster's following him around. Yeah. The world. <laughs> Literally, the world. Oh, that's made no sense. No, it didn't. <laughs> but <laughs> he, co- he collapses this time, doesn't he? He kind yeah. of passes out in the middle of the street. And he wakes up sitting at a computer. And Brian Cox is in a capsule on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this sounds mental. That's because it's mental. I can't do any. I'm so, any, I'm I'm so glad I picked this film. I can see that it is stressing you out. It's proper stressing me out. I can't I read take... my own writing. I'm stressing out. I'm having flashbacks to watching it. I'm taking great pleasure in this. I just want you to know that. <laughs> and yeah, so Brian Cox is in this like almost like a stasis chamber. Yeah, he's in like a pod. He's all wired up in like water. Yeah, or some sort of liquid. And Ryan says to him, "You're so you're the one that's controlling me." And he is Doctor Langham. Yeah, Doctor Langham. And he is Harkin's father. Yes, yes, he is. And then he goes again, and he wakes up again in that office library type room. Yeah. And Harkin's there with him, but he's asleep. Yep. <laughs> and they... So he logs onto the internet again, because that's what he's done every time he's been in this room so far. And he finds a video of Dr. Langham being interviewed by, like, a news reporter. Good old news report to give us some <laughs> <Yeah>. exposition. <laughs> um, every trope is in this movie, I'll tell you. <laughs> every one. And he's got to be an interview. Ryan's there with him in this interview. He is sitting next to him, yeah. So, because he's like the rehab doctor. And Ryan talks about his wife being killed in a car accident. Yeah. I'm glad but it made, it made me laugh because basically he was like, oh, I was too tired to drive, so I got my missus to drive. Yeah. And then she fell asleep and we crashed and she died. Yeah. So that's, that's, literally, that's literally that's how he story. tells it as yeah. well. Yeah, with that sort of in an intonation <laughs> in his voice as well. But that's where it comes out that Harkin is Langan's son. Um, and then when Harkin wakes up, Ryan decides to pretend to be Dr. Langham. Yeah. Even though he's in Ryan's body. Yeah. This is where this film fell off a cliff. <laughs> so Noel Clark's now doing an impression of Brian Cox. Yeah. <laughs> while still being Noel Car- Clark. And he's, and he's really obvious as well because he's like, oh, son, I, I can't remember the codes to get out of here. <laughs> so I, I can't, I can't, I can't remember... I can't um, remember the weapons code. Yes, I can't remember where we're keeping the uh, the boy hostage. <laughs> <laughs> can you just write it all down for but, me on this piece of paper? I did write down the weapons codes. I thought it was brilliant. It was awful. It was so funny. <laughs> oh, dear. And, but he's, and he's, like, he's all like, oh, come over here, old chap. Like, yeah. oh, right. nice. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. But Harkin eventually figures it out when... Well, he tries to find out where Alex is being kept because he he knows. No, it, the only way he figures it out is because when he when Ryan goes to write down the information, he uses his wrong oh, he hand. uses his wrong hand. He's like, since when have you been left handed yeah. or right handed? <laughs> um, so they he kind of runs away. Ryan kind of runs away from him at that point, doesn't he? And he bumps into some policemen. Yeah, and he tries to get himself arrested, but then Harkin comes out and just shoots both the cops. Yeah, they're dead. And then Dana turns up. Now, where are we at this point? We're in... I don't know where we are. Well, presumably we're back in New York. Possibly. But we must be. Yeah, but but then the in Singapore. Yeah, that's true. So Dana turns up anyway and she says... Profitable business, this pimpin. Tell you. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Lots of air miles. So she says, follow me and I'll take you to safety. But then when she gets him around the corner, she says, sorry. And then Sergio's goons kind of turn up. Yeah. And they take him, don't they? And he gets kidnapped by them. So they're back in the brothel again. Yeah. And... And... And um, the Russians basically say, oh, last time you were here, we got a massive ransom for you, so we're doing it again. Yeah. <laughs> so Harkin turns up and pays the ransom to get his dad back. Dad slash partner back. Yeah. I have no clue what's going on. I'm sitting here watching this thinking, I haven't got a clue. I've literally, I thought last week's was bad when I hadn't got a clue what was going on. This is worse. So he's paid the ransom to get Ryan back. 
who every 10 minutes is is Ryan. No, not every 10 minutes. For 10 minutes, every now and again, becomes Ryan. But for the rest of the time, it's his dad. <laughs> yeah, apparently that's what's happening. So anyway, he gets him back and they leave. But well, uh, they have another massive fight. They have the a book. shootout this time. Yeah, I've there's... written Kung Fu rather than Kung Fu. Kung Fu. I, I've written shootout. No idea who's shooting who. Some goons get taken out, uh, but Ryan's shooting at Harkham too. So everybody's just shooting at everybody. Yeah. And Ryan is definitely shooting at Harkin at one point. Yeah, yeah. It's but, then, cool. but then Harkin, they leave together. But then Harkin goes through this door in the brothel to get out. Yeah. But the brothel only allows one person to leave every 10 minutes. Yeah, so you don't take no... Uh, so you don't... You don't take a hoe with you. Yeah. So That's the idea, I think. Once you're out the door, the door slams shut and then you can't For leave. For like 10 minutes, yeah. So Harkin gets out. Yeah. Ryan's trapped in there. Yeah. So he fights everyone else. He fights Michael Bisping. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, basically Dana shoots... Sergio. Yes. Yeah, they have a bit of a, a more slow motion fighting yeah. going on. Yeah. And just as the police arrive, yeah. he passes out. He was awake for way more than nine minutes. That was a lot longer. I was going to say that. that was a lot longer than ten minutes this time. Uh, Dana manages to get the gun working because it's one of these DNA coded guns by Michael Bisping's strangling Ryan. Yeah. And Ryan's reading out the codes to get the gun working whilst he's being choked to death. But they manage to, he manages to get out in the end because he goes down the fire escape. And then he tells Dana to leave because when he changes, he will kill her. Yeah. And then loads of police turn up and arrest him. No, I think that was... That. That's what I've got here. Oh, uh, okay, fine. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. It's all over yeah. the place. It's, it's crazy. Um, yeah, he gets, anyway, he gets arrested, but then he changes again. And this time he wakes up and he's being waterboarded. Yeah, by the same two guys. By the same two earlier. cops. But he's on a plane this time. Yeah. For some reason. Oh, he's on a plane because it's they were allowed to waterboard people for longer <laughs> on into over international waters. Yeah, because they're not That's in a country, saying. basically. Yeah, because they're not yeah. in a country. Um, and while they're waterboarding him, he kind of tells them that he's being controlled by this Dr. Langham fella. Yeah, he's, so he's, he, again, spurts the whole plot out. Yeah. I'm being controlled by this guy. Yeah. Um, it's called droning. Yeah. And he's got a modem inside him, is what he says. And the feds want to know where this lab is. Yeah. And he doesn't But know. They're, not, they're not buying it at all. And, and he basically says, I think these guys want to control everyone yeah that's, the, their goal. that's their goal ultimately is to control everybody in the world and the cops not having it at all they're trying to make him talk and then the cops got an old-fashioned gun yeah like one of our guns from this day and age which he shoots and does he shoot it yeah he does shoot it because the back end of the plane comes off he, well he's playing he's torturing him right because he's doing russian oh, he's got, yeah he does like a russian basically. roulette thing doesn't he tell so, me where the lab is so it's been a few days i watched this on sunday night so it's been like four <laughs> days since i watched this um, yeah, and they end up with the back end of the... The whole plane breaks yeah, apart. Yeah, suddenly the back end of the plane rips off. And one of the cops goes flying out of it. Yeah. It's one of the, it's a Hemsworth, isn't it? The Luke, guy who plays the cop. Luke Hemsworth. So he's, he's the third Hemsworth. Yeah, the non-famous Hemsworth. So, yeah. TV Hemsworth. Yes. Anyway, the, 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 the plane crash, or the plane breaking apart, was quite a decent scene. Well, it did come out of nowhere, so it's yeah. Completely it was out of nowhere. probably it's the a, one surprise. Nice bit of CGI. But just as it's all happening, Ryan changes again. Yep. And... This time he's chained to a wall. Yeah, when he wakes up. When yeah. he wakes up. And Harkin's there as well, talking to him. And it turns out they're in the back of a van this time. Yeah. So he's chained up to a But Because it worked so van. well last time, he's he pretending to be the dad again. Yeah, yeah, he does the Brian Cox impression. And it made me laugh again, because he, he was like, come, <laughs> embrace me, son. <laughs> oh, dear me. And it turns out, the reason that he um, keeps coming back into consciousness for 10 minutes at a time is that there have been a load of solar flares affecting the satellites that are <laughs> that are running the mind control system. Yeah, so, I'm glad you've got that because I've written, on my notes here it says something about solar flares. <laughs> <laughs> so because of that interference, that keeps knocking a system out and then every time they have to reset the mind control, yeah. it takes 9 minutes and 47 seconds. And yeah. in that time period, that is when Ryan's consciousness comes back, back into his body. Got yeah. And that is how convoluted this is. Yeah. It's not as complicated as it makes it. No, not at all. It's, it could be quite a simple little concept. It's yeah. a nice little idea. But it's dragged out and so bad. terribly explained that that is basically what's going on. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. Um, Harkin buys all this and he, un- he unchains them because he wants a hook from his dad. So stupid. <laughs> For someone who's supposed to be like a sciencey, yeah, clever, he's, what an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, my, Ryan manages to overpower him and... That's when you find out they're in the back of a truck. Yeah. And so he gets out of this truck. This bit made me howl with laughter. Because he, he gets out of this truck and he's in the middle of a massive field. So there's nowhere to run to. Yeah. So he just runs around in circles. Yeah. 
<laughs> I guess that's. I was trip. crying. It was like, what are you doing? I think it was supposed to be dramatic. It was a nice field. Don't get me wrong. It was, it was lovely. Like picture. trees. Around. He ran towards the trees, and then he was like, "That's too far. I'm going to go back this yeah. way." And then he kind of he ends up back at the truck. It was awful. And so he's just like, he gives up in the end. He's like, "Nah, that's too far to run." Like, running. Yeah, he goes back in the he van. Goes back in the van. He's like, "Should we have a drink?" Yeah. And Harkin shows him a picture of his wife, and they have a drink. But then he manages to chain Harkin up to the wall. Yeah. Covers them both in petrol. Yeah. So I guess Ryan's now thinking, I'm going to kill us both. both see yeah. if that breaks just the cycle. Just get this over and done with. Yeah. It, just as he's, he's lights this match or lighter, and just as he's about to do it, Dana shows up. See, he literally puts it... Yeah, he like lights the fire. Yeah, so he, Ryan is sat in the front seat of this van. Yeah. He's covered in petrol. He, he's got this lighter from somewhere. Yeah. He, he ignites. You actually see a bit yeah. of flame on the petrol that's around him. Yeah. And then someone... There's fire extinguisher. Yeah, Dana just shows up with a fire extinguisher yeah. and just instantly extinguishes him. Because where's she come from again? She was Obviously. not in that field when he was running around like so, a crazy person. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. So we've had recently a couple of, uh, how should we say, improbable escapes. Yeah. So we had, we had Dolph Lundgren off the submarine. Yeah. And then what was the one we had last week who escaped improbably? Uh, small crimes. Yeah. Oh, there I can't was, remember. What was it? I, can't I remember, remember mentioning it, it. I can't remember the detail. My memory's terrible. Yeah, my you can cut well. this bit out. We're getting so old. Anyway, <laughs> this this was a, as an improbable arrival as uh, Dolph Lundgren's escape was in, in Blackwater. Go and check our episode out. Yeah. Where has Dana come from? Don't know. This field is completely empty. Yeah, and we were just out in it a minute ago. Yeah. She has not covered ground that quick. No. And she's looking at a fire extinguisher. Yeah. How did she know he was going to set himself on fire? Anyway. So she extinguishes him anyway, just as he's yeah. caught fire, she extinguishes him straight away. And she gets him into some handcuffs. She says, right, put these on. Yeah. We'll talk when you next come back. Yeah. Basically. So she cuffs and masks him. So uh, we wake up and he's in another truck. And it turns out they're back at the hospital. Yes. Slash laboratory. Yeah, they're back in the Langham's lab. Yeah. This is so complicated. And the scientist's there and he's dead. The guy from earlier. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, Dana sort of uh, let's run out of this truck, yeah. gives him a gun, and he's like, here you go, everyone's in there, yeah. go and sort this mess out. <laughs> and considering he's only got 9 minutes 47 seconds, he's not Russian. He's not Russian, no. He's English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he finds the dead scientist, and then... Yeah, he gets back to the lab, and the scientist is in the freezer. Yeah, dead. And then another guy turns up, who is being also being controlled by Langham, if I understood this correctly. Correct. Yeah, I'm glad I got that right. So it's the it's Liam Hem- uh, uh, Luke, Luke Hemsworth. Yeah, it's the who, cop. Yeah. He is now being controlled by Langham. As well as Ryan is also yeah. being controlled by Langham. But he says, basically, we've, we've improved the system. This one's not having any dropouts. Yeah. I've finished with you. Yeah. You're not coming back again. Yeah, this is, that, you won't be coming back the yeah. next time. And it turns out we get a bit of an explanation about what's going on now because he says Langham wants to control every, literally everybody in the world which will bring everybody into line. And if anybody disobeys any of his laws or his rules, he can just turn them off. Yeah. So, great society. Yeah. It's con- mind-controlled society, but there's no crime, there wouldn't be anything wrong. Um, but Ryan is not having this, so he cause, he manages to cause an explosion because he knows science. Science, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> but he reacts some water with some acid or something and this whole thing explodes. And he manages to shoot the guy. Yeah. And kills him. And, and Harkin turns up. Yeah. And he's got Dana. As a hostage. As a hostage. And he's got a different idea to his, what his dad's got. Because he doesn't want to control everybody. He just wants to control a select... The right people, basically. A select group of people at the right times. So he can just take control of people. If he thinks like Donald Trump's going to make a mistake and start a war with Iran, he just switch him off or change his mind. Yeah. That's, that's his talk plan. Through. It's a much more sensible plan, I think. Also, can I just point out... Yeah. I don't know, I know we've obviously not got any realism in this movie, but all the way through this, right this time Ryan's got like a countdown yeah. on his on his phone so we can see how much of his nine minutes forty seven yeah. seconds he's got left. That's the first time we've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's gone. So the time in the film that you're spending watching this film is going slower yeah. than the time on his count <laughs> Cause he checks it and he's got like three minutes ten left. Yeah. And then all this stuff happens, the villains like uh yeah, Dr. Langham's like, yeah, here's my master plan. Yeah. Then he does the science thing, explosion. Yeah. Then he finds Harkin. He then goes, blah, 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 this is my master plan. Yeah. It's, it's got to be five, six minutes yeah. length of the film. He looks back down at his counter and like a minute and five seconds is gone. <laughs> He's still got two minutes left. 
So that really made me laugh as well. Um, I've written at this point, Alex is hanging from the ceiling in a weird acid bag. Yeah. Um, Because this is the point where it... You kind of see that for the first time. You've seen it, but you you see it like they're all in the same room now. And Harkin is standing directly underneath it. Convenient. Convenient. Because he's he's about to shoot Alex, uh, about to shoot Ryan, but Ryan manages to shoot the bag that Alex is in, which causes some acid to drip out of the bag. I'm really (laughs) going to say this. There's some acid to drip out of the bag and it dissolves Harkin's fingers. So he can't shoot the gun anymore. It drips so exactly. <laughs> right on his trigger it finger. It doesn't even dissolve his hand off. No. It dissolves his fingers. Yeah, just his three fingers. Off his hand. Yeah. And this bag is 20 foot above him. Probably more than that. Probably 30. It's a warehouse ceiling, isn't it? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um, they have a bit more of a fight. Um, Harkin manages to stab Ryan. It's not bad for a one-handed yeah, guy. Considering he's only just had his fingers burnt off. Um, but just as he does that, Dana whacks him around the back of his head. Yeah. And he's kind of lying on the floor, looking upwards. And guess what happens? Another bit of acid drips off the back and burns his face off. Yeah. Dead. Uh, which kills him, obviously, because acid in your face is burning his fingers off. It's going to burn his face off. Yeah. Yeah. And Ryan says to Dana, you need to look after Alex. He can be your surrogate son. Yeah. He's, we've saved him. I don't know how we're going to get him out of this bag of acid. He's like, he's like yeah, I'm going to finish it. It's the only yeah. way to get out of this. Yeah. He's like, they have a bit of a kiss and he goes to shoot himself. And he, does he miss or does he intentionally miss? I think she, no, she, she, she knocks, him, like, knocks she? him. She like gives him a, the old drops the shoulder. Don't do it. Yeah. And he manages to shoot the wall. Yeah. This bullet just ricochets into this wall. And the whole wall collapses. Yeah. From one bullet. Yeah. And what's behind the wall, Nick? It's Dr. Langham in his pod. Brian Cox in his stasis chamber. Um, and they kind of, they have a bit of a telepathic communication. Yeah, they kind of lock thing eyes, going on. They lock they? eyes. And Ryan shoots him. Can the, t- the time is still going down. The time is going down. So I think we're down to about nine seconds yeah. now. So Ryan like shoots his gun straight into Langham's head. Yeah, he's like, time's up. Yeah, just literally as the clock ticks down. Breaking the connection. Breaking the connection. Breaking at zero the seconds. Uh, but then Ryan collapses. So, and then there's a bit of a kind of fades to black, doesn't it? It comes back up and... Everyone's in their pants. Everyone's in their pants all of a sudden. <laughs> so Ryan's in bed. Underwear. Sorry, yeah. just to clarify. <laughs> Why, Ryan? Ryan is in bed and he kind of wakes up and then Dana comes in and she says she's managed to cut the modem out of his neck. Yeah. She's successfully done it this time. Because... And she shows it. You know, you can do that home surgery. Yeah, why not? She's a, she's a stripper. She's yeah. qualified in that sort of thing. Um, so and she shows it him and it looks like a cockroach yeah it's like, it's like one of them little bugs that fixed him earlier things, yeah and they kind of look over a balcony in this nice big house that they've got and Alex is downstairs yeah and she's like Game Boy she's something. like he's a good kid yeah. he's still a bit wary around you you killed his mum yeah <laughs> and they <laughs> but go he's off. our kid yeah so they're gonna they're obviously gonna raise him now Jesus. and they go off and do the naughty and the film ends that's it what was the bit at the end I didn't get when he was like he looked at the clock as it ticked over I don't know I did, I, like it was supposed to be important I even rewound it and I didn't get it no I didn't get it either I didn't care enough to rewind it by that point so I didn't <laughs> he's going to be father to the kid of Kids, the, the, the mum that, that he killed what did you think you, this was your wild card film what did you think of your wild card film this is a terrible film <laughs> this is a terrible film absolutely terrible it's awful but <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hate watching it <laughs> you didn't no I did no because it made me laugh loads. Because <laughs> it was so stupid. Yeah. I. But I don't think it was trying to be stupid. No, 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 not at all. It was being deadly serious. It didn't know, yeah. It didn't know it was stupid. Not even slightly. I, honestly, I, I laughed a lot. At I this. laughed at it, but I hated it. I hated it so much. I can't much. say I hated it. No. I hated it so much. Like I said, I made 13 pages of notes. I had to pause it about five times. And I got to the point where I'm not pausing this anymore because it's taking me too long to watch this. How much of that <laughs> didn't you need? All of it. Yeah, <laughs> because it it didn't follow through with anything that it set up. No, none of it. None it of the little no storylines that they built up came to anything. We don't know why he killed Alex's mum in the first place. And, well, other than the fact that they were trying to get to the scientist. What is it with films trying to have a twist like you're going to go, oh my God, he's my control all along. Yeah. Just, what, we could have had that at the start. I think it's Shilalaman's fault. I'm blaming at it. At the start. Have that at the start. Right. This guy has been mind controlled. Every time the system resets, he gets 10, 10 minutes back. Yeah. I want to know that at the start, and then we just can just go and have loads of fun. Exactly. Something like Limitless, or have you seen Limitless? With yeah, 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 a while ago. That's a similar yeah. sort of yeah. idea. It's, ugh, it's 
I hated it. I hated everything about it. I hated the fact that I was having to watch it. <laughs> and I hated the fact that I had to keep pausing I it to catch it with my notes. I love that you hated it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. I, had to hate, I hated the fact that I had to keep pausing it to catch it with my notes because it was taking me too long to watch it. I think it took me about two hours in the end. It, yeah, it took, it took me a while. Um, I was really surprised as well because I... Another one of the reasons I picked this was that um, we mentioned that trilogy that Noel Clark's done before that, you know, the sort of... Um, Adderwood, Kiddleton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's quite well received and he Noel is, Clark's he really is well quite respected. well respected. I, and I didn't think this would be great. I never had that high expectations. Yeah. I didn't think it would be this. No, I didn't. When it, when you picked it last week, I was like, oh, that was quite fun. I'm yeah. going to enjoy that. I didn't enjoy it. It was just not fun. Um, it was nonsense. It's clunky as hell. Yeah. Some of the, like I say, some of the dialogue in this is, it's just, it's hilarious. When he starts doing that Brian Cox impression. Yeah. <laughs> for for one, he was doing he's the wrong Brian with, Cox. Yeah. He was doing Dr. Brian Cox. He's literally like, chin chin, dear boy. <laughs> it literally was. That's exactly <laughs> what he was doing. It was When he was like, come here, embrace me, son. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Cox doesn't talk like that. <laughs> Brian Cox is not a posh. Well spoken English. But language. even when he when he watches the video and he he watches um Brian Cox's character, Doctor Lagom, doing this interview, he doesn't talk like that. No, he? he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't. I, I, it made me laugh so much. It's like he was trying to impersonate the wrong Doctor Brian Cox. <laughs> it's like he was doing the posh astronom astronomer guy. Part of me enjoyed this film for all the wrong reasons. You enjoyed it because you knew I would hate it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's completely. Exactly what's going on there. When, and then that wasn't that honestly wasn't my intention. No, no, no. That was just a really nice pleasing bonus. <laughs> You're a bastard. I, I was like, at least if I'm watching this, I've taken. I, I, I knew that you would hate this more than me. Yeah. I did. <laughs> I hated it a lot. Um, it's really bad. It's so bad. Don't please don't watch it. <laughs> The anomaly. The anomaly. Unfortunately, what it was is, the anomaly? What was that all about? Was the anomaly the fact that they they were basically having um, IT issues? <laughs> should they just call it the by... solar flare issues? Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. what the film should be called. Yeah. Oh, we, dear we cannot me. connect your call. We are not moment. having a good run at the minute. No, I mean, well, let's get to the stream table. Let's do the trivia question first. Let's okay, get that done. Have you got one? Uh, I've to got go a first. couple. I don't know who's going to go first. I'll go first. Okay, go for it. Um, in this film. Harkin and his father run a Bioware company. Yeah. What is the name of the Bioware company? That's an interesting question. <laughs> um, it's three initials, if that helps. Yeah. Do you know why I think it, I say it was an interesting question? Because you've got it written down. It's going to be one of mine. <laughs> Damn so, it. Yes. At last. <laughs> I was hoping this would happen once. Uh, it is LSR Bioware. It, Bioware. It is. Congratulations. I, what does that stand for? Did we ever find out? I don't think we did. Langham. No. Langham's and Science son. Research. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, does that make it four up? Yeah. You caught me up. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Okay. Well, that was going to be my question, honestly. Well, that's crazy. Yeah. We're connected at the brain. Um. But I'm not. I'm going to ask you something different. I'm dreading that happening because I only ever write one question down. So if that happens, if you'd have gone first, then I wouldn't have had a question for you. Well, I, do, I do have another one, but you're not going to be happy with me. <laughs> um, so <laughs> carrying on with the theme. Yeah. So we started this episode actually, and and maybe it's a happy accident. You were talking about being a fighter. Yeah. Because you lost a fight to a tree, <laughs> and then we had a little game about. To be fighters. fair, I think the tree's probably dead now. It had fallen over in the road. But... Oh, true. Fair play. So you got you lost a fight to a dead tree. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair play. Um. So we had a game about about UFC fighters. Yeah. So uh, let's let's go back to Michael Bisping. Okay. Because he's British. We're British. Yeah. You know. Um. That was a good achievement. So he was the first British person to hold a UFC championship. Okay. So I I want to know what <laughs> weight division <laughs> did Michael Bisping. It's like at the beginning, I don't watch UFC. At, it's a big guy. That's interesting because he was mass. He looked massive compared to everyone else. He in did, this yeah. film. absolutely. He's cut. I don't think he would be heavyweight. And I don't think he's he was still good. fighting at the time when this. He's retired now, I believe. Right. right. This was. Um, I don't even know what the weight classes are called in. You know some UFC. weight classes. Yeah, but I don't know if that's what they're called. It's just. Um, I don't think he'd be heavyweight. He's a big guy. But I don't think he's that big. It's like light heavyweight. I think there is a light heavyweight. I'm going with that. Is that your final answer? Yes. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's incorrect. Damn it. He was a middleweight champion. Middle, I wouldn't have even known that was a thing. Which is up to like, I think it's about 180 pounds. It's definitely bigger than that now. But that's Yeah, but that's weigh-in <laughs> weight that you yeah. have to get to. Yeah, it's bigger than that. He's a massive dude. Um, 
That's not a question about this film, but that's fine. <laughs> well, it's your I fault. Stole it, so it's I'll, your let you fault. I'll let you off. Right, let's just level yeah. peg in. I, I've got two weeks in a row. You have. Well done. It's four all. What a streak. You could, you could take over next week. I'm going to have to really watch the next film, like, meticulously. <laughs> you made 13 pages of notes. <laughs> How much more meticulous? Yeah, but I didn't make one about Michael Bisping's fighting weight. <laughs> it's not mentioned in the film. Should we talk about the stream table? Sure. Where um, I think we're looking bottom area again. Yeah, but we might have a bit of a difference because... Yeah, I think we will. It is terrible. Don't get me wrong. But there's, I think there's probably quite a few films that I had less of a good time watching than this. Okay. So, so it could be tricky. I think we're going to be miles apart on this one. <laughs> okay, go for it. <laughs> Uh, I went first last week, so... Okay. You can go first this week. Uh, scroll up a bit then. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Okay, so shall I read the bottom yeah. for you? Yeah. So Buster's Mad Heart is currently in 16th. Small Crimes from last week is in 15th. Yeah. Uh, Blackwater's in 14th. Clinical's in 13th. Clapper's in 12th. Do I need to keep going? No, you're okay. around there. Okay. So I, I'm I'm just uh, I'm just trying to decide which side of the clapper that this goes. <laughs> That's how high I would put it. <laughs> wow, we are miles apart. I liked I I had a better time watching this than uh, than clinical. I tell you what, I know where I I would like to put it. Okay. Because I've enjoyed how much you hated this, <laughs> and I'm just going to take as many people as I can down with me. <laughs> I know that one of our patrons, Ross Cook absolutely loathe the clapper he did i am gonna put this underneath the clapper just to push that film up a bit as well <laughs> um so what 13th 13th yeah this is in my opinion not only the worst film we've watched this season it's one of the worst films <laughs> i've ever seen <laughs> this for me is a rock bottom of this stream okay that's interesting <laughs> i had no enjoyment whatsoever. There was a few bits where I laughed but how stupid it was. But I took no enjoyment from this film whatsoever. It is one of the worst films I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. <laughs> this is exactly it. This is all I've wanted from this podcast. <laughs> I hated every single second of this film. It was really bad. We're miles apart. It was really You're bad. going 13th, I'm going 17th. Yeah. I did not... I cannot have this lower than... But I I hated watching Buster's Malheart. So did I. And that's also one of the worst films I've ever seen. I hated Small Crimes last week. Yeah. This was easier to watch than either of those. I hated both of those two films. I didn't hate Blackwater. I didn't enjoy it, but I didn't hate it. So there's three films this season that I hated so far. So we need to come to some sort of... I'm prepared to concede two spaces there. I will put it above Small Crimes. Okay. Because I hate all three of those films. I so think it doesn't matter to me which I think I would take you up on that offer. So you're prepared to go below Blackwater. Yeah, I think so. I mean, looking at it, Blackwater was really bad. It was really bad. But in a way, I think it's similar to this in that there were there were parts of it that made me laugh. Um, <laughs> You're not supposed to be laughing at either of them. <laughs> no, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I really didn't like clinical. I, I. Right, okay. I'll tell you what. So I, I enjoyed watching this more than I enjoyed watching clinical. Okay. I, I find that terrible. But I am happy to concede a couple of spaces also. Uh, okay, cool. Because this is a terrible, terrible film. And I am getting more personal enjoyment out of watching <laughs> you squirm, to be honest. Um, and I think that's probably affecting me a bit. I will, I will take your deal. So we're putting it above Small Crimes and yep. below Blackwater. Yep. 15th. Yep. I think that's... I, I did not I did not think this would be that bad. No, I, I, I can't imagine you would have picked it as your wild card if you'd have thought it was going to be that I bad. I thought it was going to be bad, but yeah. I thought it was going to be fun. Yeah. And it was not fun in the way I thought it would be. <laughs> Not fun in it all the right ways. Because it took itself really seriously, and I wasn't expecting that. No. I hated every minute of it. <laughs> it was such a bad film. It's, it's a terrible film. Yeah, it was There's good nobody's film. good in it. The directing's appalling. The, it's just awful. It's just awful. Some of the slow-mos in the fights as well are really undramatic. Yeah, completely. So, I don't, so I it takes about 10 minutes to do a spinning kick. Yeah. It's like, you missed it. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, so sometimes it's just he does a punch. Having done a few flips, yeah. the slow mo is then on a normal punch. punch. Yeah, and it's just really weird. It's like, why have you chosen to put that in the slow mo? It's this film is incoherent. I said yeah. it at the start. It, it is, is completely it's, incoherent. It makes no sense, and there's no point to it at all. Yeah, it tries to be twisty turny. It doesn't need to be. Like I say, you put that premise, which 
you could have a bit of fun with that premise. Yeah. A guy come, you know, comes back to consciousness for ten minutes at a time. Tell me that right at the start, and then, like I say, just let's go and have a bit of fun with it. Don't take it seriously. Yeah. This this could have been all right. Doesn't do any of that. No. It's fucking terrible. It's garbage. It's pure, unadulterated garbage. It's one of the worst films I've ever seen. I stand by that. <laughs> it's a terrible, terrible. Film. I'm so glad I could help you with this. <laughs> I tell you what, though, mate, we're on a bad run at the minute. I'd love to be up at the other end of the stream table, but I don't even remember what's up there. <laughs> it's been so long. I really, really need something good to watch, please. Really, I think really um, need it. it's it's interesting comparing really... it to the first series we did. This, if I feel like the good stuff's been better, yeah, but there's been less of it compared to our yeah. first series. We had a good start to this season. Yeah, the first three or four episodes were decent films, but since then, and we've seen more. The, We've seen less middle of the road stuff this time round. Yeah, and it's either been brilliant or shit. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, it's been a it's been a tough few weeks. We need something good to come out of the bag today. Okay, so uh, well, that did backfire a bit on me. That wild card <laughs> did a little um, bit. But I, hey, the, that's we've got the eight films the... left to do in this season. Yeah, I want those three films to be at the bottom of this list because <laughs> oh, I don't want to imagine? see anything that even troubles those three now. From this point onwards, if I see another film that troubles those three films at the bottom of the table. I'll be devastated. I do not want it to happen and I'll be gutted. I, ju- I just keep chuckling because um, every time I see the clapper slowly rising it does, up this it table, getting up the table. Uh, it just makes me think of Ross and it makes me laugh. <laughs> Fuck you, Ross. <laughs> right, shall we pick next week's film? We're, we're yeah. right an hour and 15 minutes in. Let's do it. Uh, right, I'm going to press the button on my little app. There's no sound on my little app. Standard. Bear with. Let us pick a film called The Babysitter. Oh. Any ideas? No. Let me, let me have a look. This could go one of two ways, I believe. We're you thinking comedy or horror? Yeah. It's got to be one of the two, hasn't it? Right. The Babysitter. Do you want to hear the synopsis? Sure. The events of one evening take an unexpected turn for the worst for a young boy trying to spy on his babysitter. Okay. That's... It is listed on, <laughs> it's listed on IMDb as a comedy horror. <laughs> well, there you go. It's got Robbie Amal in it. And I've got fact. It's not a fact about Robbie. Is he in um, what did we watch last season? The comedy, the, the Adam Devine film. Was that Robbie Amell? Um, when we first met with the time traveling photo booth. Yeah, or was that the other one? Because he's got a brother. Yeah. There's several Amells, isn't there? Like there's several Hamels. It, it is him. When we first met, he is in that. I liked him in that. His brother, Steve, Stephen Amell. Yeah. Was born on exactly the same day as me. Really? Yes. May the eighth, nineteen eighty one. Wow. There's a fact for you. Uh, yeah, it's got him in it. It's also got. Um, Samara Weaving. You know, you'll know the face if you see right. it. Uh, do you watch the trailer? Yeah, let's do it. All right, tomorrow night, you, me, party. What up, say? B, call us if there's any trouble, okay? Call, don't cause any trouble. I bet B has boys over at your place all the time. That's what babysitters do. Have you ever been awake after she's fallen asleep? I love her. Oh, man! Three out of four people got an STD. I got two people with blood on me. You do the math. My babysitter is trying to kill me. But the attacker's in the house. The downstairs having a blast. Alrighty, babes, let's head upstairs and get the blood of the innocent. This would go viral. I mean, nobody's done human sacrifice. People have always done human sacrifice. Yeah, but like, not in America with hot people. Hey. when you make a deal with the devil. Why is he shirtless? That's your first question? There's only one way to end this whole Fuck you! You guys suck. You crazy bitch. That 
That looks fun. I know we've been burnt by trailers before. Yeah, I'm, many I, times. I am thinking recently of Clinical, which had a great trailer. It did, yeah. And it was terrible. <laughs> I'm going with a positive mental attitude. It looks all right. It looks like it might be fun. I like a good comedy horror film. The, the trailer like, made me laugh, so... Yeah. I don't like comedy. I do like horror. Comedy horror's all right. So we'll see what happens. Half and half. Half and half. So yeah, go out and watch... Uh, what's it called? The, the Babysitter. Babysitter. And uh, we'll be back next week to talk about it. Sure will. Cheers. Bye. Bye.